Hey guys, this is an explanation of how to measure a volume with a graduated cylinder. So one of the first things you need to be aware of when you start to use a graduated cylinder is how far apart the closest marks are to each other because that determines to what place you, you will record any volume that you measure with that graduated cylinder. For example, with this graduated cylinder here, the closest marks are five milliliters apart. So that means we can estimate to the ones place, but we cannot read this to the tens place. It's, it's impossible. Whereas this graduated cylinder here, the smaller one, um, the closest marks are one milliliter apart, which means we can estimate the tens place, but no farther. But it is important that you record every measurement that you make with that graduated cylinder to the correct place. For example, on this graduated cylinder, if the, the measurement was 200 milliliters, right on the 200, then you would need to write 200 with a decimal point, showing that all three of those digits are significant figures, but nothing to the right of the decimal. And the units are milliliters, little m, capital L. Whereas with this graduated cylinder, if this was right on the, the 10, let's say, you would record one zero decimal point and then a zero in the tenths place, but that's it. And the units again would be milliliters, little m, capital L. Real quick, um, you see these, ring, these plastic rings here? They are not to read the graduated cylinder, but rather they're to prevent it from breaking if it tips over. I'm not gonna tip it over now because it has liquid in it, but if this were to fall over, this would hit and prevent the graduated cylinder from breaking. So they should always be up towards the top somewhere. One thing we have to be careful of when we're reading a volume in a graduated cylinder, or any cylinder really where has, that has a liquid in it, is that the, the top of the liquid is eye level with us, or we're eye level with this. So if I were to read this volume right here, I would need to make sure that I'm down at that level. If you're not, parallax will cause you to, to read it incorrectly. If you're above the level or below, below the level, you won't get the correct reading. So when we're reading the volume in a graduated cylinder, we always read the bottom of the meniscus. You'll see when you look at the pictures here that there's a curve to the liquid inside of the, the cylinder, and we read the very bottom of that curve. So let's read the volume in this large graduated cylinder first. Some of these graduated cylinders, such as this one, have two different scales on them. It's really important that you read the correct one. In this one, the scale on the right starts with zero at the bottom and ends up at 500 at the top. The other scale starts with zero at the top and has 500 at the bottom because we're using these to measure much, how much liquid we put into the graduated cylinder. Um, we always use the scale that starts with zero at the bottom. And so we would read this volume in this graduated cylinder here as we say, okay, first we kind of zoom in on it. Where is it? Well, it's between 200 and 250. Okay, remember, the closest marks are five milliliters apart. So if we start at the bottom, or that's a 200, we go up, okay, 200, 205, 210, 215, 220. Well, if we look at that, it's not quite, the bottom of that curve is not quite at the, the 215 mark. It's a little bit below. So we would call that volume maybe 214 milliliters or maybe 213 milliliters. It's your call, whatever you think it's closest to. Whereas when we read this graduated cylinder here, remember the closest marks here are one milliliter apart, so we'll record this to the tenths place. So again, we zoom in on it and say, okay, there's the 30. Each one of these marks is one, so it's 31, 32, 33, and it's a little bit, the bottom of that curve is just under the 34. So we might call this 33.9, um, 33.8 milliliters. Again, that, that last digit is estimated and it's understood and it's your call. 